Here we go. Am I echoing? We're on our second part of the series, Set Free. Last week, can you remember what we talked about last week? Pride. Amen. Amen. Pride. Pride is one of the uh, devil's, uh, well, that's what got him kicked out of heaven, was pride. He had pride in his heart, and out he went. Amen. So I'm not going to go through that one again. But today we're going to go into the second part. There's four parts before we get to Easter. First one was pride. This one's called bitterness. Ooh, bitterness. Bitterness. What is bitterness? And then next week we're going to talk about lust. Lust. I don't want to see an empty church. And then the last one we're going to talk about are old wounds. Old wounds. We all have them. Old wounds. And so these are the four things that we're going to talk about for the Set Free series. And then we're going to get to the cross. Amen. We're going to do the cross because it'll be Easter. And we're going to have a great time. And our sister's bringing the word. And I'm excited for that. It's going to be a great, great time. So anyways, today we're going to talk about bitterness. Hebrews 12, verses 14 and 15 Follow along with me. Now, I've got some scripture here that I have not got a clue how to pronounce some of these names. And you'll find out why when we get through here, okay? So, but this one here is Hebrews 12, 14, 15. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God. And that no bitter root grows up and causes trouble and defile many. Amen. Let Lord bless that portion of scripture. Bitterness is one of the most destructive and dangerous of all human emotions. It's bitterness. It's one of the, one of the most destructive. And if it's not dealt with, if it's not dealt with, will spiritually destroy the person who has it. It will. Amen? Are you hearing me, church? Bitterness literally is one of our taste sensations. Did you know that? It, it is. It is. A sharp, harsh, disagreeable feeling in the mouth. I've had a few meals of that. But that's what it is. A lemon is bitter. You all know that. Aspirin. Is, uh, is, it tastes bitter before it's swallowed. When I was in Cuba... I met a young man who uh, uh, suffered from migraines. And I asked him, I said, what do you do? And he says, all we have is aspirin here. And it's the uncoated aspirin. So you know how bitter that is. And that's what we helped him out. We gave him some Tylenol and some stuff. And he, he, it was good for him. So, but anyways, that's, it, that's bitterness, right? Uh, it's a, uh, where am I now? I lost my notes. Bitterness. <laughs> Bitterness, figuratively, is a disagreeable feeling deep inside. Bitterness occurs when we feel like life is unfair. How many been down that road? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Uh, we feel offended. How many have felt offended? Just me? Just me and Alexa. Okay. Well, I'm offended. <laughs> Pushed aside. Annoyed or provoked, we were resentful, cynical, grieved, jealous, or distressed, or, or angry. And even hate will build up. Even hate will build up in our hearts. Amen? That's what this root of bitterness will do. We got a big chip on our shoulder. How many have been down that road? And we feel that we haven't received our fair share. We've been slighted, and it shows. I worked with a man who was, at, I mean, you didn't have to find out if he was bitter. You could see it. And he was a bitter man, and nobody could work. I could work with him. The Christian could work with him, but nobody else would work with him. But he was bitter every day. And he just had a hateful look. Uh, you know what? It shows. It shows. Bitterness is the root of all roots. The word bitterness comes from the Greek word pekria, pekria, P-I-K-R-I-A. It's a Greek word, and it literally means sticky. Think about that, sticky. It'll stick to you. 
sticky. Bitterness will stick to you. Amen. He, uh, so let's move on. What can it do? What can this thing do to me? Well, it says here in verse 15, let's read it again. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up and causes trouble and defiles many. If we're bitter people, it will produce a whole crop of other problems. And when I did my study, I mean, yeah, this will freak you out. When I did the study on this thing originally, it comes to a head in our actions in our behaviors and our attitudes of the heart. It'll come to a head, okay? I got a little bit of a list, including addictions, irritability, depression, pornography usage, lust, immorality, anger, a lack of forgiveness, hate, envy, jealousy, and so many other more are traced back to a root of bitterness. Isn't that something? Like that's pretty, that's pretty heavy duty. And it can affect you physically. It can affect you physically. Listen to this now. It, it, it can affect you physically. It is medicinally linked to glandular problems. High blood pressure, cardiac disorder, and ulcers. And I've been down that road. Ulcers. And so I'm kind of thinking back. Maybe I had a bit of a root of bitterness into me. Amen. It can cause discourage. It can discourage you emotionally. It can lead to paranoia. Everyone's out to get you. Amen. The devil's hiding in every bush. You become negative, critical, and paranoid. And judgmental of others. That's what this root can do. It can divide your fellowship. And it'll halt your spiritual growth. Show me a church or a person that carries this spirit, and I'll show you somebody who is not growing, or the church that's not growing. Amen? And it isn't something that starts and stops. It does not start and stop. It becomes a lifestyle. Bitterness becomes a lifestyle. I worked with one. It becomes part of a person's being, and it'll finally eat you alive if you let it. It's a heavy-duty thing, this bitterness. Bitterness necessitates that we walk in the flesh and not in the Spirit. Look at Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is, and stand with love, first one right off the bat. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those are the good things. Amen. And I love it how love is the first thing. All Christians have a choice every day. We do. We have a choice every day. And we have a choice many times a day. Take a step in the flesh or take a step in the spirit. Amen. Can I get an amen on that? Yeah. And bitterness will defile your relationship with others. And it'll defile your relationship with God most. Look at Hebrews, looking at it again. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. For without holiness, no one will see the Lord. I don't know about you, but I want to see the Lord. Amen. And it's, and it, the root, this thing is all through the Old Testament as an example to us. Amen? Amen? And if you don't know history, you'll repeat it. That's why the Old Testament is there. I had one person say, well, you know, that's Old Testament. That's, no, that's Old Testament. We're in the New Testament. We're in the whole Bible. I hope you know. We're in the whole thing. And one time I asked the, you know, I asked the Lord. This is kind of, the Lord is very humorous with me as sometimes. And he, I said to him, I said, Lord, I said, what's this deal Old Testament, New Testament. Like, where are we? Where? And the Lord said this, Phil, it's all old. It's, by the way, that New Testament is 2,022 years old. <laughs> That's old, man. The whole thing. We got to eat it all. And if you don't eat it all, you haven't ate it all. 
Amen? Amen? That's just my little tangent. But if you don't know history, you'll end up repeating it. And I'm going to show you some examples. Look at Joseph and his brothers. How about David and his brothers? Here's one I'm going to read to you. Esau, and not only his brother, but his father as well. Look at Genesis 28, 6 to 9. This is an amazing story. You want to see somebody that's got a root of bitterness? Listen to this. Now Esau learned that Isaac had blessed Jacob and had sent him to Padam Aram to take a wife from there. And that he, uh, that when he blessed him, he commanded him, listen to this, do not marry a Canaanite woman. And that Jacob had obeyed his father and mother and had gone to Padam Aram. Esau, this, this is, here's, this, here's the bitterness rating. Esau then realized how displeasing the Canaanite women were to his father, Isaac. So he went to Ishmael and married that lady. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> the sister of that girl. <laughs> and the daughter of Ishmael, son of Abraham. In addition to the wives he already had. You talk about bitterness. Well, I just don't like that. I, your dad says, no, I'm going to go there. That's bitterness. bitterness. See how that root grew in him? Most of the time, when we harbor bitterness, it's usually towards God. It's usually towards God. Why, God? Why would you do this? Have you ever been there? Why would you bless them and not me? I've been down this road. And the blame game goes to God. Why not? Because he's easy to blame, isn't he? He's so easy to blame. He takes it good. Remember the story of Naomi and Ruth? How many know that story? Naomi and Ruth. Well, I'm going to share that. Naomi, Naomi loses, I'm just set it up. Naomi loses her husband and her two sons. And when she ends up going back to her home town in Bethlehem, the townspeople say to her, Hey, hey, is that not Naomi? And this is what she says. Ruth 1, verse 20. Don't call me Naomi. She told them, call me Mara. Because the Almighty has made my life better. Imagine that. By the way, do you know what Naomi means? Sweetness. Guess what Mara means? Bitterness. Don't call me sweetness. Call me bitter because God... Didn't help me out here. And the blame goes to him. Amen? So that's bitterness towards God. It'll defile your relationship with people and God. We cannot be bitter towards anyone and love God. We just got a great example, and I'm going to give you a scripture for that. 1 John 4.20. 1 John 4.20, it says this. Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or a sister, is a liar. Boy, that's pretty blunt. For whoever does not love their brother and sister who they have seen cannot love God who they have not seen. That's pretty, pretty challenging right there. Very challenging. Very strong. A bitter spirit will deprive you of a blessing. You won't come looking for a blessing. You'll come looking for what is wrong. And sure enough, you'll find it. Amen? You'll always find it. Did you know this? That the, this root of bitterness is even spoken about in the end times? Now this ought to shake you up. Look at Revelation 8, verses 10 and 11. And by the way, the two toughest books in the Bible, Ezekiel and and revelation and i hear so many people talk about re this is what's going to happen this is you don't know what's going to happen and by the way you can tell these books by the first sentence in each one i was in the spirit on the lord's day it wasn't in the natural i was in the spirit and everything that you get so but anyways here we go the third angel sounded his trumpet and a great star blazing like a torch fell from the sky on and on a third of the waters and the rivers and on a and on the springs of waters the name of the star was wormwood a third of the water turned bitter and many people died from the waters 
that had become bitter. Let me explain to you what wormwood is. Or it means it's a composite plant. It's a composite plant with deep roots having a bitter taste. That's what wormwood is. It's a narcotic poison. And the word of God says it'll affect one third of the world. Let me ask you something. Do you think we're living in the last days? <laughs> Do you think bitterness is running rampant through our world now? I get the feeling we are. All you have to do is turn the TV on. You'll see it. The bitter spirit is running rampant in the world. By the way, water and sea and that, that's people. That, was what, that means people. When it says something came out of the sea, something came out of the people. And so I'm looking here and the rivers and the waters are the people. And a third of them will have a bitter spirit. Amen. I remember I, I got down here when I first did this here. Uh, at that time, there was an election. Isn't it funny? We've got another one coming up. But here's what happened. I remember in the days when the election, you, the issues were the big thing. The issues. Well, we want to talk about this issue, and we're going to deal with it this way, and this issue this way. Not anymore. There's such a bitter spirit that has entered into that, that, that realm. It's what can I get on him? I got to get some dirt on them and use it against them so I get picked. And that's the way it's, you know, they've got this going on now. It just seems to be the thing. And they probably don't even know they have it. They probably have no clue that they have this spirit. Amen. So what's the answer to all this? I mean, God, uh, that's the bad stuff. What's the good stuff? And I said this earlier, it becomes a choice. It becomes a choice. Look at Hebrews, uh, going back to that again. Verse 14, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Make an effort. Make an effort. Amen. Now, I'm going to say something that maybe some of you may not agree with, and that's okay. But I'm telling you, it's the truth. And that is, we're all, every one of us, are going to have or go down this road of bitterness. Every one of us. And maybe you're going down it now. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because Jesus did. Jesus went down this road. So you're going to go down this road. Amen. And I believe, this is what I believe. I believe it was the last temptation of Christ. It was the last temptation of Christ before he died on the cross. And I'm going to show you something. Look at Luke 4.13. I'm going to read three scriptures and see if you can put it together. Luke 4.13, when the devil had finished. This is when he was in the wilderness being tempted by the devil. It says, when the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. He left him until an opportune time. Then the next scripture is this. Psalm 69, verse 21. They put gall in my food and gave me vinegar for my thirst. And then Matthew 27, verse 34 says, They offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. Now let me explain this. First of all, we need to understand that the devil doesn't just come and say, well, that's it for him. He left him until an opportune time. And he does the same with you and me. I'm going to come. I'm going to try and see if there's any cracks and crevices I can get in there. I'll be back later. He does that. Amen? He left him for an opportune time. Matthews, our Psalms and Matthews tells us that they gave him gall. You know, anybody know what gall is? Gall is anything extremely bitter. Anything extremely bitter. And I believe it was the last thing they tried to get Jesus to take on the cross. They gave it to him when he was up there, just about done. Let's just try him one more time. Let's just see if we can get him to be bitter. Amen? By the way, do you know what Jesus did? Let me tell you what he did. Look at Matthew. Uh, or sorry, look at uh, next one. Luke 
This is what Jesus did. Luke 23, 34. Love this. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And they divided his clothes up and cast in lots. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. So he had a choice. He chose to forgive. He didn't choose to be bitter. I wonder how many times we get the choice. Amen? That guy cut me off coming to church. I got his license plate. Am I going to look for him? Or am I going to bless that man? Amen? That's the answer. That is the answer to this whole thing is forgiveness. Amen? Bitterness is a root that grows straight down and it grabs a hold of everything it can get a hold of. It is a deadly silent weapon and the devil uses it on us, folks. He uses it on us. And sometimes we don't even know it. I've been down that road and the best possible solution for bitterness is to choose not to. Just like Jesus. Our example is Jesus. Can you imagine that? Think about that. You're hanging on the cross and you've been tempted by everything in the world and they think, well, we're just going to get them ticked off here and be mad at everybody. And just have a bitter spirit about everybody. And Jesus said, no, no. No, that's not what we're about. That's not what we're about, folks. Amen? Say, that's not what we're about. There we go. That's awesome. Best possible solution, just like Jesus. But if there's a root there, already there, we need to cry out to him. Amen? Look at Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. We're just about done. It says, get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice, and be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgive each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Amen? That is the answer. Hallelujah, there's an answer to this. Yes, yay. Can I get a yay? <laughs> Hallelujah. And when the disciples asked Jesus, show us how to pray. How many remember that? What did he say? He said this in the prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as... We forgive those, amen, who trespass against us. One more scripture, and that's it. Ma Matthew six fourteen. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Did you happen to hear that? We keep sinning. <laughs> but we need forgiveness, right? And when people sin against me, I got to forgive them. I forgive you, Kim. I know you didn't do anything, but I'm just using you. But if you're thinking about it, I forgive you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But that, there, there. And you know what? And the Lord will forgive us. God will forgive us. That's the major thing right there. I want his forgiveness. So I have to do my part to receive his part. Amen? God is good. Forgiveness is the antidote to bitterness. So what's the Lord saying to you today? Is he tugging on your heart? Or is all well? Don't forget, we just started the day. We've got the rest of the day to go through. One of the best prayers I ever heard was the one where the guy said, Lord, so far I haven't been bitter to anybody. I haven't got mad, I haven't done this, and I haven't done that, but in a couple of minutes, I'm going to get up out of bed <laughs> and start my day, and I'm going to need you. Amen? I'm going to need you. So, as I said earlier, we all have to taste this root. I'm going to ask everybody to stand, because I know there won't be room up here if we all came forward. So the best thing to do is stand and just agree with me as I share this prayer. Even put a prayer together for us. And just say this prayer in your heart. And we're going to come to a spot where we're just going to pause for a second. And just offer up a forgiveness to anybody you can think of. 
in your heart that you need to forgive. Holy Spirit, please pull any root of bitterness out of our hearts. We say before you, we, we say before you that life hasn't always worked out the way we hoped it would. And because of that, we have allowed bitterness to form. Right now, in prayer, we want to release anybody or anything that we've been holding a grudge against. And just take a second, you just think of someone, or whatever, you know, if you need to forgive anyone. We release that person or thing by your power and might, and we choose to forgive. Deliver us now, in Jesus' name, for any demonic stronghold that may be caused by this bitter root. We agree in prayer that our lives belong to you, Jesus Christ, and that we will follow you wholeheartedly. Fill us now with all the fullness, all the goodness and power of your Holy Spirit. And we ask these things in the strong name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Give yourself a round of applause. God is good.